Welcome to Snail Trail 4x4. Today we are installing a retract bed cover onto a third gen Tacoma. So this is a really nice bed cover system. This one's actually metal. This is the Retrax Pro XR, the aluminum series. They do have one that comes in polycarbonate or a plastic, and it's a lower grade level. This one, the XR series, has the uh, rails and everything else to build an entire rack on top. So we might be going through that in addition today. But for the most part, we're just going to set up the bed cover and get it on here so that we can clearly lock things down into the bed so that people can't get inside of your bed to steal items that you might be placing in there. Now that does not solve the problem of locking your tailgate. We um, can always add a locking adjustable tailgate in there or you can just manually do it yourself. So let's get into installing this bed rack system today. Here's some of the pieces that came with the kit. Um, what we have is a wide variety of some screws and nuts and bolts and some foam. These are some foam pieces that we're going to be installing uh, pretty much first, and they're going to be some for the weather stripping. These foams are going to go on the base of the, the retract so it doesn't rub or vibrate against your bed. Uh, here's some miscellaneous nuts and bolts and an Allen wrench provided that are going to be to enclose everything. Um, here, these bolts and right here are going to be for the assembly for... Uh, these guys are going to go in the track, and these guys are going to assemble the retrack to the track system that's inside the Tacoma, um, and that's going to use these washers up top. These are shims that are provided, so in case something's out of alignment, uh, you can use these to try and get everything nice and straight so your retrack system glides smoothly open and close. So to start off here, we've got two operations that we need to do inside the bed. First is we got to remove these hooks in this area because the box and the assembly is going to fall down in here and this is going to be in the way. The second is we need to pull these off uh, the back part here and put on some foam blocks. So pulling these off first, it's a T40 uh, and you're just going to zip those off. All right, now with the T30, we're going to pull off these five Torx bits along here so we can take off this top plate. go all right so now on these little ends right here we're gonna add some foam and then we're gonna reinsert this um, it's sort of a weather protection uh, rain block um, you got one sticky side one non sticky side and those go on the end caps of this uh, top rail what I found is if you actually push this down and now you have a solid base to put that against it actually lines it up quite perfectly so you can just lay that over the top and push that right on and now you do that on both sides. Okay. Now what we do is we install this back into place and now we have a little weather protection on the ends. I had no idea there was a gap there until we started doing this system. Now reinstall the five T30 bolts. Now we'll torque those down by hand. I'll go get a bit. So we're setting the whole entire system up now to go into the back of the Tacoma. And to do so, we have to remove these two little spacers here with a Phillips head. There's one on each side. And we have to uncoil this uh, plastic loop-de-loop -loop thing that's holding everything into place. Um, and then we have to unlock it as well so then we can start to undo it. So first off, let's just pull this guy out. Set that aside. And then this should pull up or pull out. It's a little tight. Maybe we have to undo that next. So let's... Uh, yeah, let's unlock it, see if we can move it around a little bit more. All right, let's try to unlock it. Let's see, this way? Whoop, just that easy. We'll take this off. A little warning label. Now... We can pull that out. And then we can pull this up. And then you uncoil this out of here. 
There we go. Now you do the same thing on the other side. So now is definitely the time that you could use a little help from your friend. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out a little ways and then we're going to thread on the rail and put it into place on here. There are two spots on the rail that are going to screw into this plastic on this side here. All right, so you're going to use that small one and this guy up here. Um, I'm not sure what that one is for the point yet. It's probably for the mounting into the actual rails on the bed. So you just need to go thread into this guy and into that guy right now. And that's going to be uh, when we put that into the brackets. Um, the rail goes on the inside of the plastic because the plastic's actually bumped out a little bit. So let's pull this out. All right. Find that rail slot. It actually slides in. There's a little cut here on the weather stripping. So you can slide that over the top and keep going. There we go. And now you have to lift it. You actually have to lift it over a little lip here. And then it sits right about there into place. So grab those screws that were provided up top. These are actually the Phillips heads. And we will go through the plastic. Right there, Matt, you're in the perfect spot. And I'll thread into the rail. There we go. All right, that is one side. Now we got to do the other. At this point, what we're going to do next is slide in this top plate that's going to cover the back of the bed. But this is a great time to actually lock this into place so this doesn't retract all the way back into its carrying case. So we'll just uh, snap that guy back down and we can close it up and that's all secure. So now it's not going to move. So this guy actually slides um, sort of underneath these rails but above the clear plastic ones as you're sliding them in. Um, and you just kind of push it in underneath until the holes line up or kind of becomes flush on the back and you can see those holes through right about there and now we use the provided hardware uh, which are the allen head ones that are the little black ones and we thread those down and into this area um, it's nice and flush up top so it'll be a clean look once we're in So one of the next steps here is we're going to add some foam pieces down here to the bottom. And to do so, you have to pull off these plastic, the nice clean ones. Got it. So this step is primarily for the five foot beds because the wheel wells are all the way back and uh, you don't want any vibration or uh, rubbing to go on. So we're gonna put on these foam pieces right here on the bottom. Now we're going to slide the mounting clips into the rail. To do so, you have to pull this black plug out. You just simply push in on it and it comes right out. Uh, now just make sure that this concave section is towards the back. So you slide over the bolts that are holding this rail into place and you can just stick that in there and then slide it in. Slide the second one in, you're going two per side and then you can place this guy back in. Put leave one down here and this other one slides all the way to the back side. So the last step before we actually throw the rails onto the truck is we're going to apply these cleats into place here. We've got four holes all the way around and you're going to do the same process for all four of the locations. You're just going to slide that over so you can see the hole and then we are going to just thread the 7 16 bolt into, into it right here and then cinch that up and tighten it into place. I'm going to leave it a little loose just so we can make sure that we can line everything up and everything will work out just so we can uh, um, figure out the play of the, everything when we install it. So I'm going to tighten them all up, all four around here or the rest of the three, leave them about like that. One thing to note is that we use the black flat washer to install these with. <laughs> there we go okay so i don't know does it go out
Cool. All right. Into place. So right now we have the weather stripping actually popping out back here. Um, and it's flush on the back here on the side of the bed. We're probably going to have to push it forward that way um, when we set it up properly. But I wanted to point out that we put the weather stripping on the outside, not folded down. What we're doing right now is we are going to kind of go off script. What they say is to measure, but I don't understand why you would measure before things aren't set into place. So we're going to adjust everything, set it up into place, do a, a light tighten down of the entire system, and then we're going to measure and see if anything's skewed because you don't want these slightly off or twisted. It'll wear the track system down. Things won't roll in and roll out very easily. So we're going to set it up then measure, then see if we need to adjust, and then continue the process from there. Uh, so what we have, these are the spacers that we took off of the, um, the whole entire system at the very beginning. And these, uh, we're using this thin spot here to shut the tailgate, slide up against the tailgate, and then go underneath these rails. And there's a few spots in here that we are going to measure against and make sure that we are properly spaced off of the tailgate. So we're going to slide this up, put this up into place like so, and then we slide it. You ready to slide back? Yeah. We're going to slide that into place there. Is that where yours is? Yeah. Yep. So okay. All right, cool. And then now we're going to tighten down all the hardware and put that all into place and then measure to see if we are square. You can measure from inside to inside. You could probably measure from rail to rail. You just need to find two spots that are gonna be consistent from side to side. So we can uh, just be sure that we're doing the same thing. So inside to inside, right there. Okay, we're at 52 and 3 eighths. By the next bracket, we're at 52 and, what is that, 7 sixteenths. And we're at 52 and 7 sixteenths. So these could go out with one, probably a spacer um, on the top. Or, can, them down. Or, or let's snug it. So we were in more. So let's like, yeah, let's legitimately tighten it down now okay. and uh, see if that gets us so right where we want. Close. It's within a sixteenth, so I think that's pretty good. These are the top. Yeah, you got the top ones. Nice. Just set it down. All right, butt it up. We're measuring the same spots again. Did that thing stop? I heard it. I turned it on. Okay. So we're at fifty-two and seven sixteenths. Right next above the next ones. Oh. You're right there. Yeah. Uh, fifty-two and seven sixteenths. Nice. And yep, right on the money. So we're within like a 30 second, maybe. So it should pull out. You want to pull it out? You, you, want, me, you want me to do the honors on your vehicle? All right. Let's see. Push the button down, pull it up. Some sticky foam stuff. And it should pull over. Or just stop there. Or is that a. Maybe we just need to be more aggressive. Nice. So after all the adjustments that we've did, we found that actually once we shut this tailgate, now we're not having the lock pop up. It's actually interfering somehow with the tailgate um, underneath. So one of the things that we're going to do now is we're going to push, we're going to undo everything, and we're going to slide this backwards a little bit more um, than we had planned. So we'll push it back maybe an eighth of an inch or so, um, and we'll measure off the cab forward, and we'll tell you what we get. All right, so, <laughs> after a ton of measuring, we figured out a trick. <laughs> Pretty much what we did is it's loose. The, all four corners are loose. And we pulled this all the way out. 
to where it um, is, you know, where it's all the way it's going to be tight. Shut it so it's nice in its place. Everything's loose on all the corners, like I said, and then we shut the tailgate. So that actually pushed the whole entire system back a little bit, and now it'll open up. So what we'll do is we'll cinch everything down, make sure it's all tight, and then we'll just try this one more time. But I think just using the tailgate to make it level and straight actually worked for us. So we'll see how that works out um, once we cinch it all down. So one of the things we're going to do is actually we're in a really good spot here. I'm going to, we loosen this up. I'm going to kneel on this and put, you know, my near 200 pounds on top. And I'm going to just snug this down. I'm going to just kind of create a better seal with the, the foam and the weather stripping. And I'm just going to snug that guy down. And then do the same back here. There it is. Going to do that again on the other side. All right, one of the last steps we're going to do here is set up the drainage. Um, I'm going to pop two holes uh, straight back uh, towards the cab, be real gentle not to hit the cab. Um, and I'm using a pretty like big bit. I think it's right around a half inch. Push it in. Push it real good. So there we go. We did have to do a little uh, finagling to get that to fit, as you guys saw, but we did get everything to work out, and it's a really nice system. This is the Retrack Pro XR, the aluminum version that has rails, so then you can add additional um, rack on top of here. Um, we don't have the rack right now, but we might add that here in the uh, future. Um, this thing's rated up to like 300 pounds, so Matt, do you want to get up on top of here? I'm calling you out. Are you going to do it? I'll do it. You'll do it? 300 pounds. Yeah, of course, you're not 300 pounds, but it does move. It does dip, but I mean, it holds it. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Called him out. He Brand new rack. He just put footprints on it, but um, it's a nice system. I really like it. Um, yeah, that's about it. So if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to hammer down on that subscribe button. And like always, my friends, keep crawling.